So in order to provide a service to the network, depends on the environment that you're going to be in, but basically speaking, you're going to develop a service level agreement. Now again, if you're a telco and you're, you're providing ISP services, a lot of that has been predefined by the provider and us, the consumers, we just have to accept what they've already provided. In a corporate environment, however, the needs are going to vary much more than they would be in a consumer environment. And so many times you have both sides of the, of the usage there, those that are using the service and those that are providing the service actually sit down and have a discussion as to what the services are that need to be provided and, and how we're going to go about doing that. And we develop then what is called a service level agreement. So services are defined and a given level of service is agreed upon between the customer and the IT services department. The service level agreement clearly describes expected levels of service, how that service will be measured, what the service will cost, and what the consequences will be if the agreed upon service levels are not met. Which I've always thought would be a good idea when every time that the cable system goes out or the phone system goes out or your electricity goes out, they should have to, you know, compensate us somehow for that lack of service, but highly unlikely that's ever going to happen. One of the most difficult things about providing services is actually defining what the costs of the service are going to be. Because we're in business, we don't want to operate at a loss, so we've got to make sure that when we set up that service level agreement that we're going to be charging at least as much as it costs us to provide the service, if not a little bit more, so we can make some profit there. So this is just one, and specifically your author's idea, of uh, how to go about defining what the service costs are going to be. So he starts out with the variety of customers. Again, th this is the component that really dictates what the service is that we're going to be providing, what their needs are. Um, and then our IT account managers. So, so both of those are together, they're creating our service level agreement. And then we come up with whatever the service is going to be. And so service A in this particular case it's going to have various levels. So once we define the service, we've got our baseline level, we'll have our above baseline level, we'll have our below baseline level. Some of the factors then that are going to go into the cost of that will be the technical expertise that's required to be able to provide that service. Those are the human beings, those are yourselves, the IT personnel. Then also the processes. Many times we're actually going to have to have programmers develop code for us that's going to provide some sort of a, an algorithm or some sort of an application, some sort of a communication process to provide the actual service. And then also we'll probably require some sort of technology. It's going to be a server, it's going to be uh, hooked up to a local area network, and so all of the various technological components that are required. So all of those are going to go into our cost for providing service A and based on the values we come up with here, we come up with our, our service A variable costs. Again, thinking about the different levels of service. So each level of service that we're talking about, we're going to have a cost assigned to that. And then in addition to that, and I actually got a little bit ahead of myself here. This is the shared enterprise IT infrastructure. So we have to think about the fact that, like this organization here, um, MSJC already has the network infrastructure in place. We're just kind of piggybacking on what is already in existence, but we are chewing up the bandwidth. We are using certain resources that previously weren't being utilized, and so we're putting more of a load, more of a stress on the network, and so there is a certain amount of cost factored in there as well. And we can pretty much calculate what that cost is because we're, we have a normal mode of operations, and, and that's a little bit easier to calculate as far as the cost is concerned. So we add our variable cost, each different level, with our fixed cost component, and then you come up with your service level specific. So again, level by level, what the total cost will be for each service. Now that appears to be somewhat simple, but one of the big issues here is going to be your hidden costs. A lot of times that there are costs involved in this type of provision of servicing that we just don't know about, or that are unforeseen. And especially in the computing, networking, IT in general environment, because a lot of this is so new. It's changing every day what the cost of various pieces of technology are, or our services are. And so, you know, because of the changing cost, because we may incur events, things that, that happen that we haven't seen, haven't been able to foresee, you know, those things are going to pop up. Those are going to create additional costs. So those are what we would refer to as the hidden costs. And, and usually, 
there's a mathematical formula based on the original cost that you come up with as to what you should allocate for the hidden cost and, and hopefully then we've covered for all of the, our costs so again we can attempt to make a profit at what we're doing here. So service costing would include direct cost, those that can be directly attributed to the provisioning of the given service, indirect cost, which are those that go to support the overall IT infrastructure on which all of the services are going to depend, the variable cost, those that vary directly with the amount of level of service, so again, you know, which level of service we're providing is, is the variable aspect of that, and then our fixed cost, which are those that don't vary they are, are going to be constant throughout the delivery of the, the service itself. 